There are five ways to animate things in Flutterflow. First, Flutterflow's animation engine, and you can get to that anywhere where you see this icon right here. So if you just select a widget and go over to that, you can set up those animations there. Second, implicit animations. And these are animations on containers. So if you just select any container and scroll down to the bottom, you've got this toggle for implicit animations and you can just toggle it on there. And what happens is, is that whenever any of the properties of the container changes, it will automatically animate between those two. That's the second one. The third one is hero animations. And hero animations can occur on images or components. And we'll be adding this to other widgets as well. So on an image, if you select it and scroll down, you can see this use hero animation toggle. And if you've got components, it works the same way. So I've got a component down here and I've got this hero animation there. Fourth is a Lottie animation that you can get in the widgets if you just search for Lottie. And finally, Rive animations, which is also a widget. So in this video, we're going to show you how to set up each one of these five ways. But very quickly, what's the difference between these? Well, while there's overlap, generally those first three, Flutterflow's animation engine, implicit animation, and hero animations have to do with UI animations. So when you're animating a widget. The last two, Lottie and Rive, are for more complex animations. Okay, let's jump into Flutterflow's animation engine. So on this page, I want to animate all of these items up from the bottom when the page loads. So to do this, you wanna select any widget and come into this animation tab. Now, when you're using this animation engine, you're either gonna have one or two steps. And that will depend on what is triggering your action. And you've got two options. If you wanna trigger it when the page loads, you just set up your animation right here. If you wanna trigger your animation based on something else, like a button press, then you have two steps. The first step will be to set up the animation here. So you're defining it. The next step would be to set up that trigger in the action flow editor. Now we're gonna set it up on page load. So we only have one step, but just let me show you real quick how you would do this. So you would come over here to on action trigger. Let's just add an animation. And then you come over to the actions. Let's add an action. And if you search for animate down here in animation, you have widget animation and select which widget animation you want. We only have one defined here, so that's why there's only one in there. So that's how you would do it if you wanted to trigger it based on some other action, like an on tap. Okay, let's just delete this and go back and set up an on page load action. So I'm gonna come in here and delete this animation. So we're gonna do an on page load. We wanna add an animation and I want them to slide up. So I select the slide up one right here. So the first thing I wanna set up is the duration. That's a little bit long. So I'm gonna do 300 milliseconds. Next, let's define the vertical slide. So the initial position, I want to be a little bit lower and then animate up and in this space, that's positive, positive is down. And then the final position will be zero. Zero is just the position that it is on the canvas when you drop it in. Okay, great. So how do we see this? Well, if you just scroll up, you've got this preview. And so let's just preview it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But I don't want it to just slide. I want it to fade in and slide. And you can combine multiple animations together. So let's just close this up right here and add another animation. This one's going to be fade. I want the same duration, but if you have multiple animations with the same duration, you can come up here and just apply the same duration to all of them so you don't have to keep adding them. Beautiful. So by default, it's set to initial opacity is zero, so you won't see it. And then the final opacity is one. That means fully visible. And that's exactly what I want. Let's test this. Beautiful, yeah. Okay, so now I wanna animate the rest of these widgets down here so they cascade in. And I don't wanna redefine them all, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to copy, but not copy just this slide, I wanna copy all of these. So I'm gonna copy all the animations. Then I'm gonna come up to this next item right here, go into my animations and paste all animations. But I want them to cascade in. I don't want them to all animate in at the same time and that's what we currently have. So if we preview all our animations, you see they come together. So I wanna add a little bit delay on each one of these. So I'm gonna apply this same duration and delay. The duration looks good but I just want a delay of 50 milliseconds. So let's preview this. 
yeah, that looks good. So let's take the same thing and apply it to the rest of our buttons. So we're gonna paste it, same duration and delay. This one is plus another 50, so we're at 100. Then this is going to be 150. And then finally, we are going to have 200. Beautiful. Let's preview that. Oh, look at that. Amazing. Next, let's look at implicit animations. Implicit animations exist on containers. And what I want to animate here is this container. So I've got a container inside a container here. So here's the parent container, and then the child is this purple right here. And what I want to happen is when the user clicks on this, I want this to complete, to fill out the full width here. So I've got a page variable set up for the width, and this is just a double, and I've bound that to this container right here. So you can see here, I've bound that to this page state variable width right here. Okay, so then I need to set up some logic so that when the user clicks on this, it will change that variable and thus this width right here to fill it up. Okay, so that's gonna be in our action flow editor. So I'm gonna click this container right here and I've already got one action here set up that's just going to chuck this box right here. So let's just open this up and we want to add an action for page state variables. There it is. Let's select our variable. There it is. And we want to set the value and let's just set the value to the whole screen width. So we're just going to grab a global property of the screen width right there. Confirm. Okay, great. So we've got the logic set up, but we don't have the animation set up. So if we were to run this right now, it would just blink full and there'd be no animating between the initial state, which we have set to zero right now, the initial value of our variable. So it'll go from zero to 100% immediately. So let's come into this container right here and scroll to the bottom bottom and just select this implicit animated. You can set the animation curve and the duration is 400 milliseconds and that sounds good. So let's test this out. Okay, so let's go into here and select it and boom, beautiful. Next, let's look at hero animations. Now a hero animation is where you have two of the same widgets, but on different pages. And when you enable hero animations for them, they will animate between pages. Let me show you how this works. So here I've got a list of users and these are coming from a Firebase backend that I've got set up. So it's just a collection of users and I've got the image here. And then when the user clicks on this, it's gonna bring them to this second page where you're gonna see the information about that user. And I want that image to animate from that first page up to this big image right here. Okay, so let's start in the first page here and go to that image and scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see this use hero animation and click that on. And then go to the second page here, select the image and do the same thing. And it's as simple as that. Let's test it out. All right, so I've got Sarah here, and that looks good, and David, beautiful. And of course, if you want that animation to happen slower, you can adjust the transition duration in your Navigate action. So you can have here animations on images, but you can also have them on components. So let me show you that. So here I've got a component, and when the user clicks it, it will navigate them to the second page where I have another instance of this component, but with a different height. Now to do this, I have a parameter set up in the component. So if we double click into it, you can see I've got this parameter height and that is bound to this container right here. So every time I place this component on a page, I have to give it a height. And this allows me to animate between these two heights and also clip this content right here. So on this first page, I have a height of 79 pixels. And on the second page, we've got a height of 300. Okay, so we've got the component on two different pages. We have two different heights given, but we haven't set up the actual hero animation. So to do this, we wanna just click on hero animation. And in here, you have to add a hero tag. So we're gonna set this to notification card and then go back to the first page and set that same tag. Awesome, let's test it out. 
Okay, so here it is, and when I click on it, it animates to that second page, beautiful. And same thing here, if you wanna adjust that animation duration, you wanna change that in the page navigate action. All right, next, Lottie. Now, Lottie animations are just JSON files that have been exported from After Effects or another online animation app. Now, there's a great resource if you want some Lottie animations that are already made, and that's called LottieFiles.com. And you can search for animations, so maybe we're looking for an email icon animation. And this one looks good right here. So you can come up and you can download the JSON file. Okay, so we've got the file. So now we need to add in a Lottie animation. So just search for Lottie and drag that into your project. So then scroll down to your Lottie animation options here. And I don't wanna come in from the network. I want to upload it as an asset. Now these are pretty small, so it's good practice to load them into your assets. And it's this first one I've got right here. Beautiful. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And I don't want this to auto animate. I want it to animate when the user clicks this send email button. And I don't want this animation to loop over and over again. I just want it to execute once. So we're gonna click once. All right. I'm gonna give it 100% of the width. Now let's set up our trigger for the animation. So I want it to trigger when the user clicks on this button. So I'm gonna come in here and search for Lottie and select in this animation dropdown, Lottie animation, and then you just select the animation, which is this, beautiful, let's test it out. All right, let's send our email. Beautiful. Lastly, let's check out Rive Animations. First, you wanna to go to rive.app here because Rive Animations are built in the Rive editor and exported as a .riv file. But let's grab one from the community. So you can come over to community right here and just select community. And let's search for an email icon. Okay, cool. Let's grab this one right here. So we click into it and let's preview it in Rive. Now, Rive is a really powerful app and you can check out their documentation for using it, but we're just can make some small adjustments. First, we don't want any color on the background, so let's just come to this artboard here and turn off these background colors. Next, we don't want the artboard so big, we just wanna export a small region right here. So let's just grab our animation and we're just gonna move it over here and move it up to the top. Great, next let's go to the artboard and let's just shrink this down to the size of our animation. That looks good, and the height, great. Next, come over here and let's download this .riv file, beautiful. All right, let's jump back into Flutterflow. So I've got this page right here, and I would like that little email animation to be right over here. All right, so I've got this row right here, and let's just add in that Rive animation right there, beautiful. So the animation source is going to come from an asset, so you can upload that. I've already got it loaded in here, so I'm just gonna add it in. It'll take a second to load up. Okay, so it's loaded in, then I select the artboard that I want. I've only got one artboard, so there you go. And beautiful, there it is. Let's just make it smaller here. There, that looks good. And then you select which animation you want to run. Now, what are these? Well, let me jump into Rive and show you. In Rive, you can set up different animations and those are ones listed down here. So that's what we're selecting. Let's just choose the example right here and let's preview it. Yeah, that looks good. The animation type, except auto animate. And the trigger for Rive animations works the same way as Lottie. That is, they can auto animate, so they'll just animate when the page loads, or you can turn this off and bind it to any action in the action flow editor. And you just find that by searching for Rive. There it is. Okay, but we're just gonna have this trigger when the page loads so we can have it auto animate and let's test it out. Awesome. And those are the five ways to animate things in Flutterflow.